Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. Today's date is September 6, 2022. Call to order at 6.30. Right on time. Miracles never cease. First order of business is approved minutes of August 22, 2022. A motion we approve the minutes. We have a motion. Seconded. And seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approval of the minutes of August 22nd, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, 30, please. Next up, we have an appointment requested by the hybrid highway superintendent. George? Did you guys all meet Matt? Hi, Matt. Hi. He's the person I'm gonna, I'd like to hire. Okay. So. Matt went through an extensive background check and interview process. George beat him up pretty bad. Um, he still wants a job. That's me. That is amazing, Matt. <laughs> All right. Any questions from the board of Matt or George? Okay. Not hearing any questions. Matthew, um, do you have any questions of us? No, not really. Good. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, appoint Matthew Martin as a highway laborer. I motion we appoint Matthew Martin as a highway laborer. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? No other discussion. All those in favor of hiring Matthew Martin, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, three zero. Martin, Matthew, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. George, looks like you're a good man. Thank you. Alrighty. Next up, we have a one-day liquor license for men's club meetings. Robert. This is uh, for four outings a year at the town park. Um, we do a monthly meeting for a service organization here in San Luis. Will be for serving beer only. So, Jeffrey, where do we stand? You said that we still, there's, Bobby still needs to get you some additional information? Uh, proof of insurance listing the town as an additionally insured. Okay, so obviously the 9 7 won't work. Probably not, unless she surprises me tomorrow, but probably not. We, uh, could the select board take a vote contingent on the town receiving? Absolutely. So if she does, then all right. So we will. So you've gone through everything else. There's no what they've fulfilled everything. Yep. Uh, yep. I guess the other thing to I think the town typically waives the fee for nonprofit organizations. So. Okay. And I'm going to have to recuse myself because I'm a member of the the men's club. One quick question on that: um, Are we granting it for all four dates in one application, or are we going to be revisiting this for the other three dates going forward? The application was for four dates. Okay. Um, you, the select board, can grant as many as they feel are appropriate today and come back later. Um, and remind me what the um, expiration is on these permits when we... Well, we don't have a permit expiration policy at the moment, so... This is one of the ones that was going to be covered under the thing we were talking about before then. Right, but because it's for a specific day, it wouldn't necessarily expire. It's only for those that are sort of open-ended. Okay. And it's still within a year, even if we did put that expiration. Yeah, all four of them are within the year. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I have no other questions. Thanks. I believe we have uh, Cindy had something to add. Yes, typically uh, each license is for the date only and for the service time only. So if it's 6 to 8 p.m., they can only serve 6 to 8 p.m. on the date of the license. And that would be for each license. So it's not good for a year. It's only for any dates that are being voted on. They're separate licenses. Great, thank you. Yep. And each license will have that information on it. Okay, I, you ready for a motion? Or? Uh, I'm, I'm recused. Okay, so. So you're, you're the vice chair? All right. You're, you're meeting. So then I would uh, give a motion then I would assume then. Sure. All right, 
Um, I move we grant a one-day alcohol uh, license for the four dates listed in the application. Um, going forward. With tomorrow being contingent upon... Yes, sorry. With tomorrow being contingent upon um, the requested materials being provided. All right. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two, zero. Thank you. And do you want to do a separate motion to waive the fee? Okay, sure. sure. We can do a separate motion to waive the fee. All right. Uh, I move that we waive the fee for the aforementioned uh, liquor permit. Okay. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we will waive the fee for those two, two zero. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Okay. Um, the MOUs, we can put that off until uh, we're getting closer. If you, when you get a chance, to, if you, Nathaniel and Chris will take a chance and read those and familiars. Because is, are we getting, are we getting closer to the rental of the facility? I believe so. I haven't seen a signed lease, but uh, the director was planning to move next week, so. Well, they must be getting close. Then. Yeah, I think they have agreed terms, just haven't necessarily executed it yet. So, so okay, I'll, I'll, I'll address that up, coming up shortly. All right, so vote to request financial, man excuse me, uh, vote to request financial management review by the Division of Local Services. Jeff, you want to explain this? Yeah, a few meetings ago, I mentioned that I had reached out to the state to have them come in and, and look at our financial processes, and um, there were no objections, so I went and did it. Had the initial conversation with the director, and he said, great, can I just get a copy of the select board's vote approving this? And I said, oh, sorry. So that's, uh, if you have no objections to doing that, um, the state just requires a, a vote of the chief executive body. So, so the only thing I, I, we have done similar things in the past. We just have to make a commitment to, and we always have, is what's written to take actions, to or, or at least discuss why we're not going to do something. So, so I would think for us, it would, it, I, I would hope, I don't know when they're going to do the study and how long it's going to take them, but it probably won't be used this year. Basically. We can, we can start putting things, but so, I mean, we could maybe, if, if there's positions or if money's expense, we could put, put that in the budget, but we won't be able to fully implement their, for this budget process. Right. So I said the earliest they would be able to come out would be February, which would be very late in the budget process, yeah. but they were going to try to get somebody with accounting experience and somebody with uh, treasurer experience to come out and do an initial like meet and greet this fall. Okay. But I think that that's the most important thing is that we follow through on what those rec we, to do a study just to have a gather to gather dust on a shelf. It typically, and, and, and I think in the last 10 years, we had one of those studies that did that, and that was about marketing of our Riverside Park. And, and it was like, holy moly, we missed, somebody missed the boat because it wasn't anything like we had anticipated. So, okay, all right. So you wanna, you wanna vote then? Please. So at this time, I entertain a motion to request financial management review by the Division of Local Services. Okay, I make a motion that we request financial management review by Division of Local Services. Seconded. Any discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Uh, select board updates. So we had a village center committee meeting last week. God, I can't. Time flies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just kind of.
caught up on where we are, what projects are still ongoing, and should be having another meeting coming up soon. Did you guys have any discussion about um, School Street, doing something with School Street? Yes, there was some discussion about what next steps are. Um, I think we got a preliminary estimate of a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to bring the conceptual designs to twenty five percent engineering, which would I think is the minimum we need to apply for mass works. Mm -hmm. um, and like a back of the napkin number, pre COVID inflation was mm, between a million and a million and a half to actually do the work. That you would try to get a grant to do, though. Right, right. Okay. So that wouldn't be under complete streets, no? Um, it probably would not be under complete streets because we just replaced the storm drain on North Main, mm -hmm. and we would want to replace the storm. We could see if they would do it as a addition, but complete streets doesn't do any subsurface work, is my right. understanding. So if we wanted to replace the storm drain connecting North Main Street um, to the river, we would either have to do that ourselves, pay for that ourselves, or um, I don't think com Complete Streets would pay for that. We could have a digging party. Have a digging party. <laughs> Enjoy. We always need a boss. I'm your gal then. Okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yep. All right. All right, uh, anything else, Crystal? Nope, that's it. Nathaniel? Nope, I don't really. So the other, the other night we had a meeting, an interesting meeting, over at the uh, town of Deerfield. And the town of Deerfield, through Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay, received a $100,000 grant. But that was for the repair renovations of the, as the senior center. Yes, it was specifically for the senior center. Right, and not not for not for a study, but it says repair. Yes, my understand. I saw an email further clarifying that said it could be used for anything related to the senior center, but the specific language was repair. I believe in, in the legislation. So we still don't have that. We still don't have that clarified, right? Because we, we, our original discussion was kind of more wide ranging about studies, et cetera, for the senior center. And you're going to help me. Did, did the town of Deerfield decide if they're going to fix the 1888 building or were they looking at fixing the congregational church building? My, I got a little confused. My understanding is that they're looking to fix the congregational church and potentially, and then fix the 1888 building potentially as office space for the town offices. Is my but didn't the senior center director say that the congregational church wouldn't really work? Without an addition, yes, you did. Okay. Did does. We go to this meeting. Does anybody listen to one ever, one another? I was listening. I okay. So it was an interesting meeting. That's why I thought it was. I I, I don't quite. But I, but the the director was pretty specific when she said that she didn't think it would work. Yep. It did not. Have, I, it needed kitchen upgrades. It needed more space for programming. So now we also said, I think they said that the, the rental for the place over here in Sunderland um, was expensive. So we got a one year lease, right? Yep. So basically we have to have a plan what to do pretty quick yep. so that and again, I, I just try, I, I mean, I, I, 
I, I'm sorry I'm being deliberate here, but I don't under, I don't quite understand if everyone understands that we can't sit on this. It really needs to move or we're going to be in the same exact place we are today without a place for our staff to do stuff. Yeah, and I, I don't know if this is the answer, but I don't think I've seen a final needs assessment report from UMass either. I don't think I've seen it either. Yeah. Um, so rental and, and I think for one place in Sunderland was expensive. The Qualix Package Store. Oh. It is. I, I think it's what twelve hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars a month, eighteen hundred dollars a month, right? Um, I, I think it was closer to two thousand or twenty two hundred a month. And that would be for office it's space. Eighteen. Eighteen. I, can, I think it's sure. eighteen. Huh? What would the office use of space. The office space? Office space and also, at least, um, at least once a week offering a pro some programs there. Okay, and and that may that may we we kind of, Whiteley, Joyce, Fortune Palmer, and myself thought it'd be good because you still would use Deerfield as the main location hub, but then you would also start doing programming and, and spreading it out so that it's not all. Well, I I think. There, there was the the senior center held something uh, uh, an informational uh, gathering with a car show outdoor a Thursday maybe three four weeks ago three weeks ago and at that at that time they had a, a tent with 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 a, a number of booths where people could get information right. Mm -hmm. And, and the amazing thing to me was that there was a significant amount of people that were using and getting needed information, and and I was I was I was really surprised that there was people from the town of Sunderland that were over get and that may not be normal users of the senior center. So if you if you want to expand if it if you and, and many people just are not aware of the information and or the services that can be had at the senior center. Mm -hmm. they, they think it's about bingo, but it's really not anymore. There, there's, there's information that can make your life a, a heck of a lot easier by going to and finding, and finding out. And, and I, I think in our town, in Whiteley, in Deerfield also, there's there's a realization that there's this information that needs to be get out to our seniors, so um, so they thought it was they thought it was ex it's expensive, um, and I guess if you're paying nothing now, but we are paying something now. I mean, you know, so Deerfield. I mean, we're paying we're we're paying rent on a an upkeep on a building that we really can't use and doesn't meet our needs. So. Is that really worth it? Now, if I was in business myself, I would say, well, you're you're charging me for a place that has minimal, min, very, min, I can't use it. You won't let our seniors in here because of of environmental concerns, mold or whatever. So you're not allowing us to come in to use it. It the office space, it's not private. It's it, so it's is it a place? It, it's a roof, but they're not able to utilize it so we're paying for we're paying for that space right now so about the same amount of money yeah. so i i just think we need to we need to address the issue and 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 move forward and and to tell you the truth i don't necessarily think we need a heck of a lot more studies that show us what i, I chris i think we have people in town if you Talk to our seniors what they what they need in a center in Deerfield and Whiteley. You don't need a really big study to do it. We we kind of know what they what what's needed. I agree. I think so. So we talked about that, but I, I did want it at the meeting during during most of the meeting. I um, 
one of Sunderland's Council of Aging members, Liz Foster, sat next to me during the entire meeting and, and right behind, and she moved forward at the table later on when they were talking about cost. Liz was on a finance committee, so it felt was, or in the past, and she was very good at squeezing a penny, so she came and was addressing some of those concerns that were brought forward. Um, unfortunately, shortly after that meeting that evening, Liz suffered a medical condition and she has since passed away. Liz Foster was a friend of the town of Sunderland. Liz Foster was a friend of mine um, and, and many others. And that entire time, the one thing, and, I, and I, I, I talked to John, her husband, and her family, and the one thing I kept saying is that that entire night, the only thing I saw of Liz was a smile. And if people knew Liz Foster, um, she always had a smile on her face even when she's bringing bad news to you at a finance committee meeting. But she, um, she was a, a, an outstanding person. And I think the, the most important thing you can say about someone is that they were, they were a good person. And, and Liz Foster was a good person. And, and I know I'll miss her. Um, there's, she was some person you could talk to if you had a problem or you had a question. You never had to worry about her sugarcoating the answer. Um, it was okay if it was a contrary opinion of, of yours. She would tell you like it was and smile at the same time while she was telling, telling you that. There's not a lot of people like that. Um, and, but hopefully if you ever serve on a committee like the select board and i hope nathaniel and crystal find those people as well that that you can talk to at any time and they will not tell you what you want to hear but what you need to hear even if you don't want to hear it and liz foster was one of those people um I'll miss her. Um, the town will miss her. And I'd just like to offer a, um, a moment of silence for Liz. Thank you. And John and her family, I offer my deepest condolences. She was a special lady. Sorry, Jeffrey. Town administrator updates. Um, just t two things. Um, one, just want to remind people, especially since we've had lots of rain last couple of days, that there is still a watering lawn watering ban until November. Um, we need to let the aquifers recharge. So I know people are probably next week if it dries out again they're gonna be like oh we got a ton of rain so i just wanted to put that out there um and the other thing is to mention that schools are back in session um we have a lot of people coming to the area from um out of state and elsewhere in the state uh so just continue to remain vigilant um covid is still out there you can get boosters um but there are there is going to be an increase in people in the area, so when you're going out shopping and stuff, you may want to just keep that in mind. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Uh, next week's meeting. Uh, next week's meeting. Right now, we don't have much, so we can, um, unless something comes up uh, between now and Thursday morning, we can plan on doing it uh, the nineteenth. Okay. That's all right. Nathaniel? Crystal, was that okay with you? It would be fine with me. That's fine with me, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, 
we need to go into executive session? Yes. Okay. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. So the chair is declaring it. So what I would do at this time is entertain a motion to enter into an executive session and then have a roll call vote. I motion we enter into executive session. Second. Roll call vote. Aye. Crystal Drake Trumbach. Aye. Nathaniel Wearing. Aye. Tom Feiden Kevitz. So that motion carries 3 0. Jeff, we will return to open session only to adjourn.